Hey everybody, for today we're going to take a look at lesson 12, which is using brushes to create an ad. Basically the big idea with this is that we're going to be able to take a look at what brushes are, how they work, and kind of different ways that you can apply them onto your art. This is again another great way of kind of adding a little bit more spice to what you're working with, giving a little bit more detail, a little bit more kind of a, a nice finish to it. Um, we're going to take a look at four different types of brushes. We'll look at calligraphy brushes, art brushes, bristle, and pattern. So we'll apply these things onto paths. We'll paint and edit paths with a paintbrush tool. We'll We'll play around with changing brush colors, creating new brushes from existing artwork, and we'll play around with something called the blob brush tool and kind of see what that does and how that works with what we're going to be playing with today. So before we jump into the actual lesson, again, everything is available to you on Blackboard. You just make sure you jump into weekly assignments. We are on lesson uh, 12, which is working with brushes. This week, we're going to walk through the start file, and then when we're done, we're going to take a look at the self-portrait project. That's going to be the follow-up extension project for this week, um, and we'll look at that as soon as we're done with today's lesson. Everything, if you download the files, is inside the Lesson 12 folder. It's just this Lesson 12 start file, pretty straightforward stuff, pretty easy to work with. So before we jump into the actual lesson, what I want to take a look at is what brushes are and where you can find them. If you go to your window menu and down to brushes, there's a whole sub-menu just based around brushes, and you can see that there's kind of some existing ones here. So let me do this. Let me zoom in a little bit. And you can see they're kind of organized a couple of different ways. You can see these things as thumbnails. I'm going kind to of show you like a little preview of it that way. You can also see these things in a list view. List view is going to give you the actual name of them, so it shows you like a little preview. Um, list view is nice when you have a whole bunch of them. It kind of depends whatever your preference is. There's no right or wrong way. It's just kind of how they're all organized. We'll see that there's a whole library of brushes down here. And when you're getting in a big library, sometimes it's easier to see them by name or to kind of just, you know, it, it's kind of up to you, but we'll take a look at using that exact same hamburger menu on the top right corner to pull those options open. So. First thing I want to take a look at is what the different types of brushes are. So we have regular straight line brushes. We have these um, more like artistic based brushes. We've got these bristle brushes that almost like recreate a, a more like a actual paint brush with, with bristles. Here we've got an art brush, which is basically just illustrator art that's stretched across the line. And then we've got these pattern brushes, which are going to essentially be a repeated chunk that we'll use over and over again. So if you take a look on today's start file, we've got two different parts to it. We've got the left side, which is going to be our finished piece, and then the right side, which is some pre-built art that we're going to use to actually create a bristle or an art brush and a pattern brush. What I want to do first, though, is I want to take a look at what calligraphy brushes are and kind of how they all work. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to see that this all in list view because I'm going to be managing quite a few of these, and I can already I've got calligraphy brushes, flat, got some, and you can also tell from this little icon along the side what you're working with here. So like this kind of squiggle on mop. You'll see that for bristle brushes. You see these little kind of chunks, that's pattern. Here I've got this little banner that's indicating that this is an art brush, and then these are calligraphy brushes. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna apply it up to this text up top here, and we're gonna take a look at kind of working with a couple different things at once. What I wanna do is I wanna select my art first. This looks like text, but this is just text that's been converted into outlines. And what I wanna do is I wanna try and apply different types of brushes to it. So I click on them. My round ones are just gonna give me a shape and kind of apply it to it. But here I've got kind of like these more oval ones. So like if I go to this five point flat, it kind of gives it that like calligraphy feel. And you also notice that up top, you've got a stroke. So the more you turn your stroke up, the more you turn up the thickness of the line, which also exaggerates what it's going to look like when you're creating the actual uh, brush stroke. Now, if at any point you want to edit a brush stroke, all you need to do is double click on it from your brushes window. And I want to double click right on my little icon to the left. And it pops open a window and it gives you some different things to do. So here it's five points. Maybe what I want to do is I want to change this. I'm going to change my angle to maybe like 35 degrees. And maybe my roundness, I'll set this down a little bit. Maybe I'll go to like 15%. Kind of exaggerates that line a little bit more. And then for my size, maybe I want to bump this up a little bit. Eight, nine, somewhere in there. I think eight will probably be good. And when, it, when I go through this, because I have my preview box checked, it's going to show me what it's going to look like. When I click OK, it's going to ask me, do I want to change this existing brush and leave it, or do I want to apply it to everything that's already been done? I want to actually apply this to my existing stroke. So here, it's still called Five Point Oval. Maybe I could even just call this a custom calligraphy. And again, you can name these things. It makes it a little bit easier for you to kind of keep it all organized. Now, we just apply this to existing art, but what you can also do is you can come over to your paintbrush tool. And you'll see that right here. 
it's docked underneath the blob brush tool. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. And the paintbrush tool is allow you is going to allow you to basically just draw things almost like with the pen tool, more like a freehand kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and cross my T here. So I'm not going to click and drag over. It looks a little rough at first, but then it kind of auto cleans itself up and smooths the lines out. And just like that, get a nice clean, smooth line for that. So that's where the calligraphy brush is, whether you're working with an existing one or you're just going to paint on one. Remember too that if you have an existing art or if you're painting new art, because these are all just strokes, what I can do is go in with my direct selection tool and say I wanted to clean up my path. Maybe I wanted to make this curve a little bit more exaggerated. Or maybe I wanted to stretch it out a little bit more and play with this handlebar. Remember, I can control all this, and because it applies that calligraphy to it, it's going to kind of auto smooth and blend that line off as I go across. So that's working with calligraphy brushes, and you can see that's applying an existing stroke, creating a new one, and then doing a little bit of custom with that direct selection tool and that works with any line as long as a brush stroke is applied to it you can kind of go back in and modify it now second thing i want to take a look at is removing a brush stroke so if you take a look here we've got one that's kind of applied to the middle it's kind of like this messy one we're going to apply some flowers to this thing so if at any point you want to remove an art stroke all you're going to do is select an object and here like i have an art but it could be a scene or it could be a pattern it could be a brush but what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit this little remove brush stroke box on the bottom of the brushes panel and that'll just replace it and i'm going to reset this down to one point so i want to make sure all my lines are nice and even and again the thickness of my lines is going to impact how big my art looks if i don't change it it's not the end of the world but i'm just going to reset it right now to one so that when i apply new art to it i don't run into any issues so what i could do is i could go in and start applying some um, existing stuff but i don't really see a whole lot here i see like this divider and this charcoal feather for art brushes i want to take a look at an existing one and i got a whole library full of them so let me zoom in up here. Let's kind of put some a little more decorative to the left and the right of this pure mental text. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the bottom left corner of my brushes panel. And you see when you click on that, it pops open a whole big list of different types of brushes. I'm going to look under decorative. And then I have one called elegant curl and floral brush set. I'll pull that open. And here it's showing me mine as a list view because I've done this before. But you may just see this, this thumbnail view. It's kind of up to you, whatever one you want to work with. I'm going to go to my list view because I know specifically what I'm looking for. The one I want is called Floral Stem 3. It's this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. I didn't have any objects selected, so it didn't apply it to anything, but it did save it in my brushes menu almost as like a favorite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this line. And I'll click on that Floral Stem, and maybe I'll bump up my text size a little bit, two points, so I can see a little bit better. Same thing over here. I'll grab my Floral Stem. I'm going to bump this up to two points. I'll clean that up a little, or size that up a little bit as well. And then when I'm done, I can just close this box because I don't need to see that menu anymore. So that's how you can use an existing art brush. And you can dig through these. There's tons and tons of different libraries. We'll take a look at a couple different ones before we go. But what I want to look at now is I want to look at not just using existing stuff, but creating my own custom stuff. So if you take a look along the right-hand side here, I've got this little like leaf object. What I'm going to do is select this thing, and I want to create a new art brush from it. And again, I'm going to do that from my brushes menu. So if you take a look at the bottom of the brushes menu, there's this little plus icon. It says new brush. So I'm going to click on this, and it's going to ask me what kind of brush I want to make this. It's existing art, and I want to apply it as an art brush because there's a couple of settings that I want to change to make sure that it looks the way I want it to. So I'll click on art brush and select OK. And it's going to ask me a couple things. First off, what do I want to call this? So I'm just going to call this thing leaves. It's going to ask me how I want to scale it. So I want this to just follow whatever the line is, or do I want to stretch it between some guides? That's what I want to do. I want to stretch it between guides. So what I can do is I can set the start and the end points, and I don't want to stretch out the leaves. I want to keep those proportional. I just want to stretch out the stem. Now notice that it's showing an arrow drawing down. That's my direction. I want my arrow to go up. I want it to start at the bottom, and I always want my brushes to sit up in the air. So what I'll do is I'll click OK, and what it does is it automatically saves this leaves as its new brush inside that brush that is panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start applying this thing. And there, it's stretching it across the line, giving me a nice proportional look. It's all going in the right direction. Oop, wrong one. Here are the leaves. There we go. And I'm just going to apply this onto all of these. Kind of use that to decorate the rest of this ad. Now, as I'm working, Remember, you're not always stuck with whatever color you're given. You can go back in and change these things by just selecting new colors on your stroke. Unless you have a custom stroke, then you can kind of play around with those a little bit. It also helps too. You bump your size up. You're going to see it stretches out. Because this is an art brush, I'm going to run into some kind of funky 
experience with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at resetting this. We'll go back to a stroke of black at one point. And because it's not applying it, because this is a custom stroke, it's not going to remember all that. What I'd have to do is I'd have to change this. So say that I wanted this stroke to be this dark green. Now that I have it here, I'd have to recreate the art brush to apply that color, stretching it, changing the direction, and setting my start and end point. So if I did want to apply color to this, I'd have to apply this as part of the brush itself. So maybe on these exterior ones, I'm going to grab that second art brush and I'm going to throw some color on these things. And that's how I'm going to be able to apply those. Now, that's what an art brush is, and that's how we can kind of go back and do some editing and some adjusting on it. But what I want to take a look at next is what a pattern brush is. So I've got some exist some leftover art here. I've got this circle and this triangle, and I want to apply some, some patterns to it. I want to kind of wrap something around it instead of just having it as that line. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to select this triangle. I'm going to go down to my library. I'm going to look underneath borders, and I've got all sorts of different types in here. The one I'm looking for is called borders geometric. And it pops up my whole list and I'm in list view. So it shows all the different ones. I'm going to go with geometric 17. So I'm just going to click on it. And because I had the object selected, it automatically applied it. And it doesn't really look like a whole much, but if I double click on my little icon here, I can go to my pattern brush options and I can kind of start playing around with things. So maybe what I want to do is I want to scale this up a little bit. And because I have my preview box selected, I should see what it's going to do. I can also change settings. So if I'm going to stretch or I'm going to colorize or adjust any of these things, I can go up a little bit more. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to apply it to the existing strokes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up my stroke on that a little bit. I want to see this a little bit more, maybe around three. So a little bit more big, a little bit more bold. But what I can also do is create my own pattern brush. So instead of just using stuff out of libraries, I'm going to grab this object. I'm going to build a pattern out of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my library. And instead of, instead of just building one out of the library, I'm going to use this little plus icon to create a new brush based off of that. And I'm going to tell it I want to make it a pattern. So I'm going to click OK. And what I can do is I can kind of control these different parts. So what does the corner look like? Well, I think I'm going to auto center my corner. I like how that looks. What about these interior corners? Got a couple different options. Maybe I'll auto center that as well, kind of blend those things in. I'll make it stretch to fit. I think that looks good. And when I click OK, now it saves that pattern brush right there. I can always come back in and put a name. I'm going to call this a black pattern. And I had on a hat, it applied it right to the existing object because I had the object selected. Now, if I wanted to apply this, I just click on the object, turn on the pattern. There it is. Maybe it's a little too big. I want to turn it down a little bit. But again, I'm running into that same issue with color. So let's try this one more time. Let's select this object. I'm going to throw a color on this thing. And one more time, I'm going to build this thing into a new pattern. And I'm going to change my selection so that I auto center the inside and the outside corners. And now it's called Pattern Brush 2. So if I select this, I can apply that. And now it applies that color onto it. It's a little bit more subtle, a little bit more simple that way. And I definitely like how that's looking. So now that I've gotten these things taken care of, the last thing I want to take a look at is playing around with these bristle brushes. And that's not something we kind of played around with much. I have this mop brush. And what these things do is they basically just let you kind of free paint. And I'm going to need to grab my paintbrush tool in order to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of draw some like wisps kind of action that comes up across here. And it auto applies it, but it doesn't really look like a whole lot. So what I want to do is I want to play around with my settings. I'm going to turn up my thickness. And now you can really see that. Remember, too, if I don't like the shape, I can kind of control that or just delete it all together. Maybe I'll just grab like a couple of shapes up here, one across here. Now, these are a little dark and I don't like the color. Because these are calligraphy brushes, what I can do is I can go in and select the color. So I'm gonna go over that light green or maybe a little bit dark. I'm gonna rotate this up a little bit. And again, these are all just kind of freehand things. So it's not the end of the world if they're not perfect, but I can also go in, take my opacity and knock them way back. So if I just want something a little bit more subtle, grab the object knock back the opacity, play with the color. And I can kind of use that to fill in those areas. All right, last thing I want to take a look at is a little bit more of a specialty brush. So instead of just a bristle brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with something called the blob brush tool, and I want to color in these leaves a little bit. So the way the blob brush tool works is that it essentially lets you color in an area, and this almost works like a little bit more like a freehand tool. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look for like a little bit more of like a rustic look. I'm not worried about this exactly filling in the art. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of grab this and I'm going to free draw. And if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. But instead of just drawing this in when I let go of my mouse button, it recreates that object as one big shape. So it's not a bunch of different brush strokes. It just finds the edge of whatever I drew and turns it into a shape. So if I wanted to kind of overlap this or go to the outside a little bit, it's kind of like a look. I can maybe go on the inside here a little bit more. And then as I fill the area in, everything that I cover will act as one big shape and then it should fill it all in. Keep in mind, this is applying the same color and the same opacity that I had before. So if I need to draw into it, maybe I missed a spot. There we go. And then if I can, I can select this and if I want to play with my opacity or my line, then I can kind of create more of those. So that's really the idea of working with the blob brushes. It kind of just auto fills that area. So that's really what it is for brushes. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just about kind of getting comfortable with what they are and how you can work with them. Once you have brushes down, it's a great way of adding kind of a little bit more interesting effect to what it is you're doing with your illustration, kind of giving you some different technique and just kind of some different looks to things. So what you're going to do is you're going to wrap this up and save this thing off with your name and uh, lesson number. So I'm going to do a quick file save out of my desktop. Save right back in that folder. Save it as PDF or Illustrator file. PDFs obviously preferred and I'm good to go. You're going to email me that. Then the next thing that we're going to take a look at is what the extension project is for this week. So what you're going to be doing is creating a self portrait. Now, what your self portrait is going to be is essentially taking a photo of you, your kid, your friend, your family member, whoever, whoever it is, but you're going to use that as a start point. Now, what I'd like to do as far as process goes is I take a photo, I drop it into Illustrator, and then I just start kind of using the pen tool to trace out basic shapes. So I have some examples on here. You can see kind of like how there's highlights of like um, light reflection kind of on the skin, shadowing that comes down from hair, major facial features, lips, nostrils, eyes, eyebrows, and then applying some of those brushes. So like some of those bristle brushes or scatter brushes that you might want to do for like facial hair, doing kind of cleaner lines or calligraphy brushes to get a little bit of a contour on edge pieces, and then kind of playing around with just different techniques, different things like we've used last week with the gradient tool and maybe using that to kind of highlight out some different areas. These things make awesome uh, like avatars and make great profile pictures if you're doing like creative stuff like LinkedIn or Behance. So again, just kind of a fun way of getting an extra chance to play around with working with pen tool, working with brushes, working with kind of fine tuning those things, and then also going in and kind of playing around some gradients. So like you can see on this example, some of the linear gradient that's used in the background. So when you pull yours open, you can zoom in on this. As far as your file gets set up, you can just set this thing up as at eight and a half by 11, just a standard paper size, bring in your photo, trace out all the major pieces, start applying color, start applying brushes, and really in the end to have fun with it. So that is what I got for you guys for this week. What we'll be taking a look at the next session is our final il our Illustrator Classroom in a Book session before we jump into the project. And that'll be on exploring uh, just different effects and different kind of things that are built in Illustrator. That'll give you a little bit more of a final finish to your pieces. So see you guys next week. Thanks.